we'd like to start with um, the, the different uh, topics that you've covered today in, the, in your two presentations on Tuesday and Thursday. And the first thing we'd like to know is um, how you view the topic of web accessibility and how important you see this topic and what should web, web developers do in order to make their websites accessible for different types of uh, disabled uh, disabilities. Well, for World Wide Web first came out in the 19, early 1990s, the web accessibility was something that was a nice thing to do but what, which, which is not required. Um, because of national legislation in some countries and because of the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, um, web accessibility is no longer something that you should, con is no longer something which is voluntary. It's required legally by the United Nations that websites have to be accessible. If a country is signed the UN Convention, then its websites have to be accessible to and usable by people with disabilities. So web developers need to use such, such techniques as cascading style sheets, um, tags on photographs and images which explain what those photographs and images are, um, a logical as opposed to um, a, a, an ad hoc um, web layout that is not a web, just a web layout that looks beautiful but one which is actually functional. Mm -hmm. um, and that makes the websites accessible to and usable by people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. One of the things I said in my presentation is in the United States there have been a number of lawsuits, legal litigation, uh, by major companies which have lost in the courts uh, because the, um, the U.S. government and other governments um, have had the requirement for accessibility of websites for some time in their national laws. And so websites have to be accessible. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Qatar, the, the basic, basic um, website for Qatar Airways is a fairly accessible website, mm -hmm. but parts of it are not accessible. So there needs to be more work done on that website. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, also, you've covered in your Tuesday uh, presentation social networking and its relationship with uh, disabilities. And I mean, how can technology be used and how social networks sure. can play a part in this. So can you, go, can you give us... I, I'd be glad to. People with disabilities often live in a very isolated environment. Uh, they may or may not have many friends. They may or may not be able to communicate with their families in a variety of ways. The social networking websites like Facebook and MySpace and Twitter mm -hmm. allow people with disabilities to become socially integrated into society. That is, if you can have a Facebook page or, or a MySpace page or a Twitter account, you can stay in touch with and, and be an equal part of your family. You can socially integrate into your family, into, into, into your family, your bigger family group, into all, with all your friends. And there are now ways to make those, web, those websites usable and accessible um, so that you can have a, a, a Facebook page or a Twitter account or, or whatever. And, and, that, and that's why uh, it's very important because people need to be able to participate equally in, with their family and equally in society. And social networking is one of the best ways to do it. Uh, also on Tuesday you've uh, mentioned the new line technology. What's this technology or what's this technique? Can you tell us more about it? Um, I demonstrated two things on Tuesday. Yep. Mm -hmm. The first one, this is a, a normal, unmodified Nokia cell phone called an N82. Okay. On the back of the cell phone it has a regular, it has a 5 megapixel camera and a Xenon flash. Mm -hmm. But inside the cell phone is special software which I'll demonstrate. Hello, I'm the KNFB Reader Mobile. Oh. Said, hello, I'm the KNFB Reader Mobile. This was manufactured by the KNFB Reading Technologies Company. That stands for Ray Kurzweil and the National Federation of the Blind. Mm -hmm. Ray Kurzweil is a scientist who invented optical character recognition, and the National Federation of the Blind is the oldest and largest organization of blind, of blind and visually impaired people in the United States. And they formed a company to, met, to develop this product. So. If we want to read anything, you put the cell phone in the middle of the page, like that. Okay. 
and it now says image capture. So to read that page, what you do is you just simply pick it up like that and take a picture. It says taking picture. Now, processing picture and books, articles, and labels format. Cameras two degrees counterclockwise relative to the page. DR. Harold W. Snyder Biography. Dr. Harold Snyder is the president of Access for the Handicapped. Incorporated. AH1A. Consulting firm in Rockville, Maryland. He holds a dossier in Modem, British Houston. From Oxford University. While working as director of outreach for people with disabilities at the Republican National Committee in 1989, Dr. Snyder was the author of portions of the final draft of the so American reading with this Disabilities Act, the, the print ADA, on this piece of paper, yes. and it will read any print. It won't read handwriting, but it will read. From 1990 to 1992, under the Bush administration, he is the author of notebooks anyway, and numerous articles on it'll disability It'll read issues, it, it'll read any any colored print on, with any other color background. Directed development project for people with disabilities in Zambia, Ecuador, and South Korea. No, I'll stop. I, I'll stop it so that we can. Canceling. Please wait. Image capture. Processing canceled. Anyway, with this with this cell phone, you can read any page, mm -hmm. any book. Mm -hmm. um, it currently reads English and 16 other languages, and Arabic is under construction and will be ready probably within the next six months. Mm -hmm. But we have to have 200 people in the Middle East who will want to use that device before it before we can develop Arabic. Mm -hmm. So we have some promises from some countries who are interested in doing it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we're going to proceed with having Arabic within the next six months or so. Mm -hmm. um, so that, so anything that's available in, in, that's printed in Arabic will be able to read. Uh, we intend to start with the Quran because if it can read the Quran, it can read anything. The Quran is a difficult book to read. So, um, and um, that product is a, considering <coughs> costs $1,000 plus the cost of the cell phone. It doesn't include the cell phone. Mm -hmm. So for $1,000, you will be able to have software that will be able to read you any print page. Mm -hmm. You put it in either the Nokia N82 or the Nokia 6220 Classic, both of which you can buy very cheaply in the souks here in Doha mm -hmm. or in souks in other parts of, of the Middle East, as a matter of fact. So uh, you t today you discussed the social and psychological impact of using assistive technology. So can you highlight this? be glad to. I, I began by making three predictions. Um, normally I don't make predictions, but I thought for this audience predictions would be interesting. Um, they're predictions that I've thought about for a long time and, and have read a lot about the subjects, and so I decided it was time to make the predictions. And they were three of them. The first one is that I believe that within the next three years, because of medical research that's going on in Australia and in Portugal, mm -hmm. medical teams are developing artificial sight for people who have lost their vision. And I predict that in within, within three years there will be uh, several people in, in, either, in either or both Australia and, or in Portugal who will be able to have usable vision um, because of the use of artificial sight. Mm -hmm. That's what I predict based on the, on, on the research that's gone on over the last five to seven years in those two countries. Mm -hmm. There are some countries uh, where human research is not permitted uh, and it's highly regulated in Australia and in Portugal. They made the decision that uh, research on eyesight was important, and so that's where the development is taking place. The second prediction I made was that in 10 years, there would be an automobile that a person who was totally blind could drive on the road. In order to do that, there has to be the just like this software used optical character recognition, an automobile drivable by someone who's blind has to use something called object recognition software. That is, it has to be able to identify the objects and the obstacles which appear on the road. And it has to be able to identify them far enough away so that the car will stop. Mm -hmm. We already have the GPS location technology. Um, we have other kinds of technology, but we, we need to have object recognition technology. For instance, we, we already have technology 
where you can take an, a series of photographs of people in a crowd, um, and a, and a, and you put those compu those those photographs through a computer, mm -hmm. and because of mat computer matching, the computer can recognize the faces of some of the people who are in the crowd. It's a way that people use to to find criminals or terrorists. Yes. Um, that's, that's face recognition technology, and that is the beginning of object recognition technology. So I believe that within 10 years there will be um, an automobile that people who are blind will be able to drive. The last prediction was that I said within 10 years there would be a, a man-machine interface so that you could, instead of typing on a computer, you could control the computer with your mind and you could get information from the computer directly into your mind and, and your mind would contribute, could, could, talk, could, could also communicate with the computer directly. Uh, an electrobiological interface, a man-machine interface, mm -hmm. so, that you, so that people with disabilities could really have control of, assist, uh, of technology um, and so their disability, their ability to see the screen or type on the ty or, or type on a keyboard wouldn't matter anymore. So long as they could think clearly and think correctly, and could communicate with the computer and, the com and understand what the com computer said to them, then the man-machine interface could certainly work. This, the beginnings of this kinds of technology, the research for the uh, on the beginnings of this type of technology are already occurring in a number of countries, um, and I believe that in ten years it will be readily available. Thank you so much for this lovely interview, we really enjoyed it.